Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of TA with MK. My name is McKay, and it's Sunday here, at least in the United States, where I'm from. It's uh, Sunday afternoon, a little after 2 p.m. Um, I'm on Mountain Time, so it's two hours earlier than Eastern Time. So it's about 4 o'clock Eastern Time right now. We've got a couple more hours in the Bitcoin CME. Uh, futures will open up. The uh, ES1 um, S&P 500 D-mini futures will open up, and we'll have some better ideas of kind of where the market might be going next. But in today's video, I wanted to focus a little bit more just on the zoomed out bigger picture for Bitcoin and stocks and just kind of where we're at potentially within this large bear market that we've been experiencing now for the, you know, this entire year and, you know, the end of last year as well. So um, tomorrow and tomorrow's video and some of the videos that I'll make this next week, we'll zoom back in and talk a little bit more about some short term ideas. But today it's just all about the bigger picture. So if that does sound interesting to you, please remember to like and subscribe and let's discuss it. It's TA with MK. It's TA with MK. Now, really quick before we dive into today's content, I just wanted to quickly shill my Telegram group. As always, I leave a link in each and every, uh, in the description of each and every video that I put out. And, you know, we've just got a few groups in here, a few of which I actually need to delete. We really only primarily use a couple of them, but uh, we've got an area where we talk about coins, altcoin charts, you know, I'll po post charts in there time to time. The one that's the most active is this just crypto chat. Uh, I post ideas within here. Um, in fact, that's what I kind of wanted to go over actually was an idea that I recently put out. That's how I'm going to transition into the start of today's video. But I want to just quickly mention, as always, that link's in the description. If you guys want to click on that, it's completely free. You can come over and, you know, chat with me, see some of my thoughts on the market and things of that nature. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to my crypto chat group here. And I'm going to scroll up here to this video that I posted to the group. Uh, it should be this one right here that just says some higher time frame market cycle thoughts. So we're going to click on that and then I'm just going to briefly let you guys watch that before we continue on. Hey guys, I thought I'd just share a couple higher uh, time frame ideas here with you just as it relates to the market cycle. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this uh, graphic before, but if you haven't, maybe this will be kind of new and, and cool for you to see. So this is what the, the Wall Street uh, cheat sheet, it's called the psychology of a market cycle. And it just kind of shows the different phases, um, you know, in a market cycle. Uh, you have obviously this left side of the price action where everything's just going up, optimism, belief, thrill, uh, euphoria, which is of course where the blow off top happens. That's where kind of like around Thanksgiving for Bitcoin of this last year, everybody in, you know, in the United States anyways, Thanksgiving, sitting around the dinner table telling, telling their family and friends about Bitcoin and their favorite altcoin and their family and friends don't really know what they're talking about, but then they run out and buy some just because you know, it's the talk of the street. And then you have the huge sell off and then you have what's called complacency, which is just everybody thinking, okay, uh, this is just temporary, a little pullback. Uh, and then there's a bounce. So everybody goes, yep, this is it. We're going back to the moon. And then, you know, the price action begins to have its big plummet, which leads to anxiety, denial, eventually panic, which is what you could kind of call this, uh, you know, 48K peak clear down to, I mean, you gotta look at this too. This is quite the percentage drop. So if you, you know, want to put a definition of panic, a 62% drop over the course of, basically March through June. So March, April, May, June, it's like four month period. You lost 62% of, uh, so imagine if all your money was in Bitcoin, you know, you you lost 62% of your net worth or at least your, your uh, portfolio in a four month period. And then you have what I would refer to as probably the toughest time to, to stick around in a market cycle. I've kind of mentioned that quite a few times lately, but you've got that, of course, the anger phase, which is what I believe we're basically in now. And then you have this long, you know, time frame where price actions really is just boring, if anything. If it, you know, you can see here, if this is what we were to be in, and you know, it's not going to follow this perfectly. Um, as you can see, it's you know, looks it looks a lot closer to perfect than it probably should. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that this is exactly what's going to happen. Really, what this represents though is just a long period of time where price just slowly bleeds, and it it creates a, a lack of interest in the asset, right? Or, or in this case, uh, Bitcoin. And one thing I want to just quickly mention here on this market cycle chart before we before we move on is if you draw this or break this down into basically the best we can four quarters, right? So splitting it into four equal pieces of this uh, price action that is the market cycle. You can kind of see that you have this first phase, which is just a little bit of a rally up, followed by the parabolic phase. 
you know, the big sell-off and panic phase. You have this redistribution and reaccumulation, followed by, you know, the beginning of the next rally, right? Well, one thing that I find fascinating, and really you should too, especially from a macro perspective, if you're an investor in crypto and Bitcoin, is that if you break, if you just look at each of these four cycles, there's really only one cycle where it really pays to be wrong and, and, and stay wrong as far as you're investing. And that really is just this second part here, right? That I'm circling on the screen. Because during this time period, you don't have a whole lot of room for error as far as you could buy here and you've only got a little period of time to be right and sell on time. Um, you know, you could rebuy here, you know, you could buy down here. You've only got though, you know, this period of time to be right. Uh, and if you're wrong, you know, you, you, you don't have so much time to make up or make amends for being wrong. Whereas if you look at these other cycles, so three quarters of it, you could buy here. And if you didn't sell it all during the middle or during the second phase, you're just lo you gave back all your gains, but most likely you're just back to even. Maybe you briefly experience a short period of time where you're at a loss and you know, so on. But I just wanted to point out that, you know, it's very obvious, at least to me, um, we'll clear up the chart just a little bit here at least at this point that we're no longer in this um, second phase where obviously everything goes parabolic and then sells off. Uh, if anything, we're definitely inside of this phase here, which just means that even if you're buying right now and you're not in profits, let's just say you're investing long-term, as long as it's an asset you believe in, especially if it's at least Bitcoin, something like Ethereum, you know, you can be wrong right now and it just it's just gonna require a lot more patience, you know, uh, most likely anyways, before you, you know, finally see the upside that you're waiting for. Question is, can you, you know, be a little bit, if you were part of this cycle here and you bought some time during here and you're at losses, can you, you know, spot that this time around when things start going euphoric and parabolic and can you learn from your past mistakes and, you know, sell this time around and take some profits. But the reason I wanted to point that out is, you know, my, my mentor always says it's okay to be wrong, just, you know, it's not okay to stay wrong. And then I also want to point out that this market is very forgiving if you look at it through these market cycles. You really have more periods of time where it's good to buy than, you know, than, than not. So just kind of a different perspective or way to look at it, uh, just in case, you know, you had never thought of it that way before. So now as we transition over to the Bitcoin weekly chart, this is the Bitstamp chart on TradingView. It's just my go-to chart, just, uh, just because I haven't found one that has as much history as this one does personally. Um, it goes all the way back to like 2011 with some of the, the history that it has. Now, I don't really look at the price action that far back, but it's hard to find charts on TradingView for Bitcoin that go back much past the previous market cycle. Well, this one does have some from, you know, 2014, 2015, which sometimes is useful to look back on. But anyway, uh, I digress. Now, here we are on the weekly chart, as I stated. And if you look back at this last cycle, it was very obvious that it followed the market cycle almost to a T. You know, after it had this little rally up, you had the parabolic phase, which is the euphoric phase. You had the big sell up. This was complacency. You know, and then you kind of had just a lot of sideways, which I guess you could really continue to call complacency. But anyway, then you had the major capitulation. You'd probably call this the anger phase. So to this point, this was following it perfectly. Now we did have a major, major bear market rally out of Bitcoin. Um, something that I don't know that I would expect or to continue in order to happen again this cycle, just because of the state of the economy, inflation, you know, there's war going on still, Ukraine and Russia and potentially some other threats of war. There's just a lot going on that would make make it hard for me to foresee traditional stocks rallying and carrying Bitcoin to, to do something like this again doesn't mean it can't happen, but the point being is that at least this part of the cycle was following perfectly. And if you just take this little rally out of the way, what most likely would have occurred would just have been some redistribution, some reaccumulation. You know, eventually you would have finally reclaimed this major level, boom, boom. And then the next rally begins going into the next parabolic uh, move, right? Again, this current cycle, same thing or similar. You had this parabolic run up, giant sell off, Here's your little suckers rally, if you want to call it, um, which was a lower high. Then you had the giant sell off. You had the sideways action for a while. And now, you know, are we potentially in the major capitulation area that happened, you know, from 6,000 down to 3,000 in the last bear market? Uh, you know, how low do we go? You know, those questions will be answered, I believe, very soon. These are things we'll be looking out for, you know, on lower time frames as well, just to get some clues. But on the higher time frames and from a timing perspective, clearly we're in, well, you know, the chart at least referred to as kind of the anger stage, you know, which if things 
stay what I would call a traditional or somewhat normal as it relates to the cycles. Doesn't mean it has to. What you would kind of expect is for Bitcoin to spend the next six months, maybe a year, just kind of bleeding out. A couple rallies in between, of course, maybe some capitulation drops to scare people out of the market more. And eventually what you'd be looking for is kind of the bottom to round out and eventually begin the next rally, whether that's in you know a year, possibly you know 18 months, two years, into the next one of these, which this should have just been more like this. You know, we had this, this was kind of an interesting cycle here because we had two tops, but that didn't, you know, that did not fit at all what happened in 2017. It was just one big rally up and then the sell off. Um, but that's besides the point. Price action will do what price action does. But from a timing perspective, if you just, you know, clear back out the chart and all the noise that I just created. So if you take your uh, price range or sorry, your date range tool up here on TradingView, and if we just drag from the cycle top of 2017 over to here to where the capitulation happened, this is something I actually have mentioned on several videos in the past, but you had about 330, uh, 343 days, sorry. We'll do the same thing from this market cycle top that we're currently in to this capitulation that we're uh, potentially experiencing as we speak, you know, and it's about 364 days. So you're only a few weeks difference there in time-wise, about three weeks. Um, and you know, so very, very similar timing. And I'm always, I'm always talking when I'm on my macro videos or my zoomed out how important timing is as it relates to these market cycles. So the question is, you know, if that is where we potentially are is inside of that phase, you know, how much longer could we maybe expect to, to be, you know, down before we finally begin our next you know, rally up or our next uh, bull run, right? Well, let's just take how long it was before. We'll just ignore all of the middle, the middle rally because that could happen, but we're not going to bank on it, right? You had a whole another 686 days before that uh, even happened, right? So here we are where we currently are within the cycle. You go out 600 and about 80 days, somewhere in that range. And where does that put us? It puts us September-ish of 2024, right? And the reason why that's kind of um, unique or you know something to take note of is that I made a previous video talking about the Bitcoin halving cycles. And if we hop over and look when that next halving is, as well as the last one that happened leading into this bull run, you'll see something that's kind of uh, interesting. Okay, so same chart. This is the Bitcoin USD uh, big stamp chart on the weekly. What I've done is I've put white vertical lines to represent when the last few halvings have happened for Bitcoin. And then the green vertical lines are just, you know, the amount of time until the top. Or those green lines represent the top anyway. And then we have dates on here or the um, date range tool showing the time frame. So the, the halving that happened in July back in 2016 you had about 518 days and then you had the following you know top of the uh, 2017 bull rally bull run then this most recent one before our cycle we just experienced you've got the one that happened in May uh, I believe it's actually April but uh, well first part of May of 2020 and about 546 days so very similar time frame until the top and the next having cycle while it's not set in stone on a date yet that's a whole conversation for another day on exactly how they calculate the havings is projected at this point to happen sometime in may of 2024 which right now from where we stand is about a little over a year and a half, 539 days uh, should happen, you know, in 2024. And what I've shown here is that if from that point you go around the average between the 518 and 546, you have about 532 days before what we would call kind of our next uh, projected top, right? The next top that would be up here somewhere potentially. Uh, hard to project exactly at this point where that might end up. A lot of it would depend on where we were coming out of the bear market. Uh, when that's all said and done. But from a timing perspective, one thing that I also noticed that's, that's kind of interesting as it pertains to this is that in each case of these halving cycles, at least in the past two bull runs that we've experienced, uh, the bottom was already in number one and price really never went lower than at that point. So basically a real safe strategy at this point would be just to buy, you know, right around the next halving cycle, which would be sometime around May of 2024. Now, it may not be as simple as that. Then, you know, we'll check on other things going on in the world at that point. But if you want to write that on your calendar, that might be one thing just in itself that could be a, a successful strategy is just watch for that date range to come you know, start accumulating during that time. And if you look at these last two cycles, especially if we zoom back into the one um, prior to 2017, 
you can see that there was a little rally going into the halving. And so had you bought there, yes, there was a little bit of a loss before the next rally, but it was very, very brief. It was only about a three week month period of time, you know, and then it rallied. And then same thing with this last halving that happened before this bull run. You can see that, okay, that, you know, the halving happened. Yes, it did retrace just a tiny bit, but for the most part, the blood in the streets was already over. All of the, uh, the bear market was basically coming to an end. And then the next market uh, rally began. So something to keep an eye out for that I thought maybe you guys might find uh, interesting. Okay, okay, that seems like a good place to leave it off for today. Now we'll follow up next Sunday and dive into the S&P 500, kind of see where we think it is within its own, you know, bear market market cycle to kind of try to project out when traditional markets might begin their next rally to the upside, which of course, uh, you know, Bitcoin by association would likely follow. So, you know, you're trying to put all these things together to get an idea of, you know, when would be the best time to buy and, you know, when to look out for that next, you know, bull run essentially. But, you know, check back tomorrow and the next day for my videos that I put out in between, because of course those are going to be the more zoomed in. And as always, check the link in the description for my Telegram group, because you can come in there, check out the things that I'm looking at, potentially trades that I'm making, coins that I'm watching, you know, short-term ideas and things of that nature. As always, if you guys are enjoying my content, please do me a huge favor and remember to like and subscribe. We'll catch you tomorrow. It's tea.